Hi guys, welcome to the chapter one review problems video for pre-calculus. Uh, this is meant to coincide with the lesson that you guys had uh, for our chapter one mini review. And I, there's three main points I wanted just to review with you, some type of problems here. And the first one we're gonna deal with is point slope form. Uh, as you can see here, we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Point slope form pretty much tells you what you need to know. You need to have a point and you need to have a slope. So as long as you're given those two things, you can plug it in here. So for example, let's say we were given the point one, two, and we were given a slope of negative two. Well, we know that one, two represents our X and our Y, and those are going to get plugged in right here and right here, while our slope of negative two is going to get plugged in right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow along here. We're just going to have y minus y1, which is 2, equals m negative 2 times x minus x1, which was 1. Now, here is where you have to specify, depending upon the directions, how they want their answer. Now, I think in delta math, they're going to have right here, just have it in point slope form. You're done. If you get a written exam or a different part of an exam that says put it in slope intercept form, well, you got to remember that slope intercept form was y equals mx plus b. Now, in order to get it in slope intercept form, you have to do a couple algebraic steps. We have to distribute this negative 2. So that's what we're going to do first. So we're going to have y minus 2 equals negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And then we're going to add 2 to both sides. And we are going to wind up with y equals negative 2x plus 4. So we had a point slope problem that started off with a point and a slope. And we left it here. This is one way you can leave your answer is point slope form or a second way you can leave your answer if they ask for slope intercept form. So that's how you would handle that. Now, a different but similar type problem is what happens if they give you two points to start? So let's say they give us something like negative one, zero, and another point of three, negative four. And they say, find an equation in point slope form. All right, well, you have a point, you have actually two points, but what you don't have is you don't have a slope. So you have to recall from Algebra 1 that your slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So if you remember from Algebra 1, this is our first point, we'll call this one x1 and y1. And this is our second point. We'll call this x2 and y2. And if I follow suit here, y2 minus y1. So negative 4 minus 0 divided by x2 minus x1. So now look at this one. we got 3 minus a negative 1. Well, we all know that that turns into a plus. Okay. So this will be a negative 4 divided by a positive 4. So we will have a slope of negative 1. That is our slope. All right, so now we actually go back to what we did in this problem. So we're given a slope now that we figured out, and we actually have two points. Now, it does not matter which point you pick, okay? So let's just say I pick this point right here. I know I have my point slope form. Again, I'll, I'll write out the formula, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And now I know I'm going to have to plug in my x and y and my slope here. So I'm going to have y minus 0 equals negative 1. And then x minus a negative 1. That'll be plus 1. And that is my point slope form if they ask for point slope form. Or, again, if they ask for slope intercept form, I know that I have to distribute the negative 1, so I'm going to have y minus 0, negative x minus 1, 
And then I got zero here, so I really have y equals negative x minus 1. So there's my slope-intercept form if I needed it. Okay, so there were two quick examples there of using point-slope form. Okay, so now the second one I want to cover with you is finding domain and range from a graph. When you find domain and range from the graph, remember that domain is the set of all x's. That's your inputs. And the range is a set of all y's that's your output. So you got to remember the basics here, and I'll, I'll write them down here on the graph. Remember that you know this is your y-axis, this is your x-axis, okay? And the big thing you have to remember now is when you're reading a graph, uh, there's a couple things you got to take into consideration, okay? And that's what do you see on it, especially on the endpoints, okay? So a couple things here. If you see a solid dot on a graph, okay? That's going to tell you that you need to use brackets. If you see an open dot, that's going to tell you that you need parentheses. If you see an arrow, either way, up, down, the way it goes here, something like that, all right? That's going to tell you that you're going to be using either plus or minus infinity. And when you have plus and minus infinity, you are going to always, 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 always use parentheses that go with infinity or positive infinity. All right, so let's go to this graph right here, the first one. Now it's not the greatest of graphs here, but what, right here, we're gonna look here. This one has an open circle. So I'll actually just make that a little bit bigger. This one has a solid circle. I'll make that a little bit darker just so we can see it. All right, so now when we read the domain, we got to look from left to right. So we're going to read the graph left to right, just like we're reading a book. So the x-axis right here. So the domain, put a big capital D here and a colon. Now, what's the farthest to the left x value-wise? Well, here's the graph. The farthest to the left of the graph here We'll label here, this is negative one, this is positive one, this is two, this is three, and so on. There's positive one, there's two. This looks like about a four up here, all right? So the farthest to the left is negative one. The farthest to the right that this graph goes, x value-wise, is positive two. Now, am I going to use brackets or parentheses? Well, that depends on the endpoints here, what we got. At negative one, we had an open circle. Open circle calls for parentheses. At two, we had a solid circle or a closed dot. That's calling for a bracket. So that the domain is all the numbers between negative one and two are covered on that graph. Okay, so now similarly, uh, we're going to look at the range. Now the range, it says you look bottom to top. So we're going to start at the bottom and go to the top. All right. So that being said, well, I'm going to have the range right here. All right. Now what's the, now here's the Y value, bottom to top. What's the lowest Y value? That looks like it's going to be at a one. What's the highest Y value? Well, it looks like right there is a four, and actually right there is a four. So the highest it goes Y value-wise is four. All right, now, the low one had an open circle. That means parentheses. The top one had a solid dot, or it was a just solid line. That's going to have a bracket. So the range goes from bottom to top, lowest one to four, bottom to top. All right, so now let's look one that's a little bit more complex. All right, and again, I'll, I'll try to help us out here. This is a solid dot, okay? This one we're going to consider an open dot, and this one is a solid dot, all right? So let's talk domain, all right? We'll go back here. We're going to talk about the domain. Now, remember domain, left to right, all right? So if this is negative 1, and this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, that's one, this is two, that's negative one. Okay, we'll assume. So farthest from the left. All right, we're going to ballpark it here. This looks like negative one half. Farthest to the right. So I follow the graph, it goes over to two, but then it skips 
All right, so because there's a skip, all right, we're going to go from negative one-half to two. So let's talk about that first. The negative one-half has a solid dot. That means I'm going to have a bracket. The two has an open dot or an open circle. That means I'm going to have a parenthesis. But now it jumps from two to three. So in order to handle that, we're going to use union notation. So the union, that big U, that's going to handle the jump that's on the graph. So this part between two and three, that's the union. Okay. And then it picks up again for X values. It picks up again at three and three has a solid dot. So we're going to have a bracket and then it goes off that arrow. Now, what do we say about the arrow? The arrow is positive or negative infinity. Since we're going to the right, that's a positive infinity. And infinity, like we said, will always have parentheses. Okay, so there's the domain for that graph. All right, let's talk about the range, bottom to top. See what they we can figure out from that one, okay? So the bottom lowest looks like negative 2. So negative 2, but we got an open circle, so that's going to be a parenthesis. How high does it go? Well, this Y value goes up to negative one. It goes up to zero, still zero there. It goes up to two here. So you think that would be the top, but it also goes up and it keeps going right here. And it's got that arrowhead on it too. So that means it's just going to keep going and going and going. And it's going to always get bigger as it goes up. So we know that going towards the top of the Y axis will go to positive infinity. So even though there's like a break in the graph left to right, there's no break in what the Y values are going from top to or from bottom to top. So the, the top will be a positive infinity. And like we said, infinity, either plus or minus, is always going to have a parenthesis. So there's two examples of figuring out domain and range from looking at a graph. Okay. All right. So one more thing we're going to look at in this video is evaluating piecewise function. This is always a good topic. You're going to see this on an SAT or an ACT all the time. So a piecewise function is, is just that. It's, it's a function that's broken up into pieces. Okay. So it could be broken up into two pieces, three pieces, four pieces, however many it wants. But what you have to do is you have to follow the rules. And the rules are all the inequalities here. The rules tell you where you're going to plug things in. Okay, so here's the function. It's 4x, 4 minus 5x if you're less than negative 2. It's 0 if you're between negative 2 and 2. Or it's x squared plus 1 if you're bigger than 2. So we're asked for three things here. What's f of 3, f of 1, f of negative 6? So if I plug in 3, which rule does that fit? Uh, fit? Does that fit the top one, the middle one, or the bottom one? Well, let's check. Is 3 less than or equal to negative 2? No, it's not. Is 3 in between negative 2 and 2? Nope. Is 3 bigger than 2? Yes, it is. So this will go right here. So that means we're going to plug it into the bottom one and have 3 squared plus 1 plugged in there. So that's going to be 9 plus 1, and we will have 10 for our answer. Then we look at the next one, f of 1. And we look again. Where does that fit? Top, middle, bottom. Is one less than or equal to negative two? Nope. Is negative is one in between negative two and two? Yes, it is. So this one fits right here. So now this one is actually a constant. They say if if you're between negative two and two, it's your answer is just zero. We don't have to plug one into anything because there's no X here. So your answer for that one is just zero for that. And then the last one, we got negative six. Negative 6 less than negative 2? Sure is. Okay, so we're going to plug that one in right here. So we're going to have 4 minus 5 times 6, which is 4 minus 30. So we're going to have a negative 26. And that will get us the answer. So there's three different parts, three different answers, depending upon what you're plugging in. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, and then we'll wrap this up. So we have f of x. He's got another three-tier problem here for piecewise. we got to figure out f of 3, f of 0, and f of negative 2. All right, so let's start with f of 3. 
Is that the top, middle, or bottom? Now notice again here, just a little little thing to tell you. Sometimes they'll write the word if. Sometimes they won't. It's not a big deal either way. Okay, these are still the rules to tell you where you're plugging things in. Okay, so we got to go three. Three less than negative one? No. Three in between negative one and one? No. Is three bigger than one? Yes, it is. So we'll go three plugged in squared. We're going to get nine for an answer for that one. All right, what about zero? Zero is going to be in this one right here because zero is in between negative one and one. This one's a constant again. Now, they're not always going to be like that. I just gave you two examples that have that. But this one, your answer is just going to be four because you have nowhere to plug the zero in. And then last but not least, you have negative two. Negative two is going to be the first one right here. Negative two is less than negative one. So we're going to have three times negative two minus one. Negative six minus one, your answer is going to be negative. I already wrote there. I was thinking ahead there, but we got uh, three minus one. And so therefore, our answer is going to be negative seven for that answer. So hopefully, this will help you when you're going through and you're doing your delta math. And please, again, make sure if you have any questions or anything that's going on, uh, with any of these problems, make sure you ask. So thanks for tuning in.